here ladies and gentlemen, my name is Corey, uh, if you were to explore my channel you'd find me calling myself CatCo, but this is a little more real, so I'm going to be doing, <laughs> calling myself Corey here, and I'm here to talk a little bit about college, specifically planning and reflecting in college, and you know what kind of inspired me to create this video, well it's a couple things, I'm really, really interested in students and student success and in assisting students in getting there, you know, and, and having the most success and getting the most benefit that they can out of college because, you know, for, for a lot of reasons, I want everybody to you know, be happy and do well, but also, you know, this is our world and this is the world we're all kind of going to be working in together and I think the majority of people really want the best things for the world and they want to do well for it, you know, whatever it is your passion and interest is, there's probably a place for it somewhere and uh, if college is the path to get you there and then I want you to be able to do it. And so I'm a student, and, and let me, before we start, let me just go to my first little slide. Let me also address this silly Prezi. I was gonna do this video just with my face, but I decided it probably could use like a visual aid, and so I have no talent for anything, so I just used Prezi and made this really short, simple presentation, but this is mostly gonna be about me talking, and these are kind of just bullet points for me to remember things that I wanted to say. So just kind of address that in advance. This is pretty boring. It's black and white, but it'll be okay. So let me move forward here and address like any kind of credibility that I might have to talk to you about this. And I mean, the, the first thing is I'm in college, right? I'm I'm a junior at a public university in North Carolina, and that automatically, if you have less experience than that, you know, your sophomore or freshman, or not even in college yet, then you know, maybe I have experienced some things that you get to experience and have, you know, seen a little bit of the higher level classes and kind of know, know what's going on there in a way that you don't. So, you know, that's it because I'm living it. But also, I mean, I have a 3.95 cumulative GPA and that's not me trying to brag about any good GPA I have. It's just me saying that I've managed to do well. If you want to judge academic success by getting the good grades, then I've been able to do that, and things that I've done and strategies that I've applied have allowed me to do so, and I, I'm always, you know, happy to share that stuff and help people with it. It's something that I've, I, I've been developing and working for a lot. And then the last thing is I, I'm actually employed at my university as an academic skills consultant, which is a position that allows me to do a couple things. I provide presentations and workshops on different academic skills to help uh, groups of people kind of learn more about time management or note-taking strategies or studying strategies and things like that. And I also do one-on-one -on -one consultations where people come in and we'll discuss their academics and we'll discuss um, you know, how they can improve them, whatever that is, and we'll go over some of those same strategies and you know, just uh, talk about one-on-one -on -one how we can help that student improve his or her uh, time in school, get, uh, have more success and learn more, and then I'm a course tutor which kind of goes hand in hand with that, so I spend a lot of time either doing that job or in meetings talking about that job and discussing school and academics and it's and, and how to improve and, and do better, and, and it's really interesting to me, and to me it's more it's more than just getting grades, it's, a, it's about learning as much as you can, and you know, becoming the most well-rounded, uh, intelligent person that you can become within this weird, like, four or more year bubble that you find yourself in in college, which is kind of this interesting opportunity to develop who you are. But doing that is difficult, and figuring out how to do it well is challenging, and some students are unfortunately not put in the best situation to do so, because, you know, there's an, it doesn't really come with a straight-up guidebook, and this video that I'm making here uh, to me kind of serves as the most basic building block to having academic success in my mind and it's all about planning and reflection and to get there though I think that there's one thing that I want to discuss and this is something I talked about in a class that I took uh, while in, in training to be a course tutor and it was a section we talked about or where we talked about adult learning or independent learning and that's something that college classes rely on a lot and if you're someone who went to college straight out of high school or you know even if you didn't really if you took a break it doesn't really matter if high school is like the last educational experience that you had then it's there's a good chance that that doesn't necessarily carry over all that directly to college because and this is particularly true like in the United States I think in, in my observations and 
and research and stuff, but students or, or teachers are kind of tasked with trying to get the most, if, if not all students, through a class, getting them all what they need, you know, helping them all learn what they need to know so that they can move forward through the system. And that's not a knock on teachers or anything, it's just, you know, kind of the, the situation. And we've seen different things like the standardized testing and stuff come up. And, and I know in my experience, I've had plenty of teachers be really stressed out at the end of the year. It's, you know, kind of reverse from now, but the teachers will be more stressed than the students trying to get everything done and trying to make sure everybody's ready to go and make a good grade on their exam, whether that reflects well on the teacher or not. I'm not exactly sure how that stuff works. But in college, it's different because it's not about the quote-unquote stage on the stage, which is something that I've heard one of my professors use here recently, and it's kind of a silly quote, but it makes some sense. It's not about the teacher as much in college as it might have been in high school. I feel like in high school, if you get a really good teacher, then you all learn a lot from them because they are very effective at providing you with that knowledge. But it's just different here than it is there. It's not as much about that. And what you'll find is... Courses in college are covering a lot of content in very short amounts of time. And so here's like a major difference for me. I took a general chemistry course my senior year of high school. Took another general chemistry course my uh, sophomore year in college once I had decided that I wanted to do a science major. So I was a little behind. It was a 100 level class, but I jumped in there and we started at the same point at the same point in class as we did in high school. But we covered, I think, more content than I did in high school by the end of that semester. And we did so, I think, in better depth. But the, there's a big difference here. In high school, I had that same chemistry class once every day for 90 minutes, an hour and a half, five days a week, I would have that chemistry class. And what that meant was we'd spend like 40 30 to 40 minutes maybe having a lecture the teacher presenting us something and then the rest of that time we'd have this you know sheet of problems to do or like a worksheet of problems of the same type so that we could kind of muscle memory the stuff into our brain and we had the teacher right there and we just work it and learn it and I rarely ever had to do homework in that class I don't know if I ever studied for it made an A in there and I you know we took the final and I knew all the stuff but the difference was with all that time and with the teacher there the whole time, she was there, you know, to serve me as a student and to teach me. And I learned and I really didn't have to, I would say that it was not independent. It was very reliant on that stuff. And in college, I had that same chemistry class three days a week for 50 minutes. So I went from five days a week, 90 minutes a day to three days a week, 50 minutes on those days. The in-class lectures would provide me, as I call it here, the canvas for my own independent learning. We would cover content, and there wasn't time to do a ton of practice problems, and I had a phenomenal professor, and she did a good job, and she'd give us examples and work with us in class, but in that kind of crunched amount of time and at the rate we were moving, it's just impossible to continue to practice at that depth. And so what it did was really provide me and this, this is true for, I think, most classes, and I take a lot of science classes now, but, and, and I guess I'm drawing more from maths and sciences here, so if you're in liberal arts, then I can't speak as much for that. I've had to take my own general studies, but, you know, someone in that, in one of those fields could probably talk more to it, but at least for me, I've gone to classes and been provided an introduction to content, sort of, and I mean, it's not that we don't go in depth, but we do go super fast, and so it's not enough time for, uh, yeah, I guess just enough time and effort for me to retain it all. It's my teacher giving me the fundamental knowledge I need to be able to go on my own and take the rest of my resources and take time and work and effort to learn it. And so the really the lecture is one component of my entire learning, which is very much self-reliant on me. You know, I'm spending less time in class and more time working on my own to learn things at a deeper level than I ever have before and that's kind of what college is at the highest point it's you transitioning from child like independent learning to your own adult or sorry childlike dependent learning to your own adult independent learning where you can think for yourself and solve problems for yourself and develop yourself 
and that's kind of where we're transitioning to here and so I just wanted to get that out of the way because I think that's important an important distinction to make because a lot of times in tutoring and in academic skills consultant work and stuff I'll hear students talking about how much they uh, dislike their teachers and this is especially true with incoming college freshmen you'll have students that say oh yeah my teacher just isn't doing a good job I don't get the content I go to class and I feel like I don't learn what I need to do and she goes so fast or he goes so fast and and what I realized is that so many of these students are coming in from high school and expecting that same kind of thing and it's not and and I've had some of these professors and they were very good professors really knowledgeable in their content but the classes were hard and those hard classes often turn into students doing more poorly and I think in that time people want to blame the professors more without fully understanding I think in the first place what their role as a student here in college is as opposed to how it might have been in high school and at least this is my experience I've attended my one four-year university you know the one of so many in the United States and in the world so you know let's be consider that as we go along here this is just coming from my own experience so moving forward I think that having gotten that out of the way we're going to go back to what I call the building blocks of academic success and it starts with planning and this is something that people don't do and I guess you know thinking back about it it's not something I always did it's not even something I did immediately in college but it's something that I've started doing that is really become necessary for me to have a lot of success in upper level challenging courses so you, you've got to have a plan and different courses and different prep professors require differing strategies and you have to and and if you're, if you're early in college this might be less important but I think the later you go get into it and the harder things get the more you have to start thinking about planning like this you have to think about how you're gonna succeed and part of that comes from goal setting which I don't have on here but you know you get you need to set kind of specific goals I want to make if, if, you, if it's in the short term, if you're just looking at this semester, which is really what I'm talking about since we're starting the spring semester as I make this video, if you're looking at wanting to get, let's say, a 3.8 GPA this semester, and maybe that's really achievable for you, right? You know, you want it to be kind of realistic and something that fits into you. If you've been like a 2.2 student, then maybe jumping up to a 3.8. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but that it just depends on the person, depends on how that semester went, if that's something you can do. But you, you want to have to set some kind of goal for yourself so that you can then build in the strategies and, and come up with a plan that can help you to achieve that goal. And you want to have that strategy or that plan have you utilize strategies within multiple uh, things that we're going to talk about, which include time management and note taking and studying and can utilize other things and resources and I'm not sure if this is something I'll come back to but you want to consider all the resources you have and that's gonna be your time in class that's gonna be the notes you take that's going to be any kind of resources online given to you by your professor that's gonna be your textbook but that's also at least two other big things and I think the first one and the primary one is your professor his or herself which uh, at least here they have required office hours where they have to be available for students to come in to talk to them and you know it could be about anything but they're there also to help you with your schoolwork and in my experience every professor that I've ever gone to has been I think really happy to see me go to those office hours and for me to do that and, and it's something I've done when I didn't understand content and I needed some help I always go there first because you get face time with your professor so they get to meet you get to know you on you know a first name basis, face to face basis, and that can be beneficial in a multitude of ways, but also you get the help directly from the source, and uh, I, I found that to be very helpful in learning how to learn from that professor and, and adapting to him or her, and just in general getting good information. But other resources you have include probably tutors, I think most universities have some kind of tutoring uh, system that they have where they have peer tutoring like we do at mine, and that's one of the things I do is peer tutor. And I go to tutoring. I went for organic chemistry a couple times last semester and it was really useful to me and that was one of the resources that I used whenever there were things that I just wasn't able to figure out on my own. And then this last little bullet here says put in the effort and it's not something I mentioned yet but it's a 
kind of an assumed thing, I guess, for me, but it's probably worth pointing out that none of this matters if you aren't coming in with the right motivation to work. Because you... You can't do any of this stuff if you don't really want it. And to me, the the top of the top level of that is to you want to learn and grow and become the best that you can be. But I guess the step below that is you just want to get really good grades. But you need one of those two things, right? Or maybe a third would be just like a real passion for your your subject of study, whatever. But you've got to have some of, some of that to want to put in the effort to succeed because college is hard. And if it's not been hard yet, then it probably will get hard. And you need to be ready to put the work in to do it. And I'm not saying that to scare you, but it's just kind of true for anything that I'm talking about in this video or in future videos that I make surrounding this stuff, which I'm going to do. I'm going to go more in depth about different strategies and stuff. And I'm kind of moving forward here and... I thought that maybe doing this would help me talk about what I'm what I'm trying to say and to provide some different ideas for strategies that you can use. So just let me take a drink of water real quick. Okay. So here's my list of how I might plan for a course. And if this was PowerPoint, then all those bullets wouldn't be there yet. I'd be able to click through, but couldn't figure out how to do that on Prezi. I think I probably will never use Prezi ever again after this. But uh We'll kind of go through here step by step and I'll talk about how I've planned for every course that I've had this semester already. You know, I've, this is my first week of school and I've done this for all the courses I have. I have 17 credit hours right now. And the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, I guess you can call it thinking through analogy if you want, but it's considering what's worked for me in similar courses and then deciding what might be applicable in this current one. And if you're new to college, then this is going to be, you know, I, I kind of hesitated to put this in here, but it is the first step that I use. Um, if your only other experience has been high school classes, then you got to be real careful about this because, and, and I shouldn't say that, but it just depends on the courses you've taken and the intensity level of them, uh, how applicable some strategies are. A lot of studying strategies that people had, or lack thereof, which allowed them to succeed in high school. I did okay in high school, not as well as I've done here, but I was okay and I never really did anything. So I didn't have a lot I could take with me from that. So that depends on you, but now that I have a lot of college experience, I'm gonna be thinking, if I've got organic chemistry, what did I do in my general chemistries? I struggled at the start of my second general chemistry course, made like a low C, maybe a D on the first test. And then I was able to come up with new strategies and plans to fix that and we'll talk about that later but some of those strategies I thought yeah I could probably take that into organic here and get off on the right foot and have a better start than I did in that last chemistry class so that's always kind of step one and I'm going to think about how I've succeeded before and how some of those strategies are going to help me now and that kind of builds on itself the longer you do this the more of those kinds of strategies you'll have and the less you'll have to think and work to be a good student this I think academics can be a skill that you improve upon and that's part of it and then the second thing I'm going to do, after I've considered the course and considered similar courses, I'm going to read the syllabus. And if you don't do that, you should, uh, because you kind of get an idea of what professors expect of you in there sometimes. And you'll also get a chance to see um, the grading weights and kind of how, how you're going to be assessed in that class. Every class obviously has its own assessment method. Some of them it's just a couple tests, some of them it's a lot of assignments and stuff and quizzes and it, it depends. That's important to know because that kind of, it's going to help you frame how you're going to go about taking the class and then using your early experience in that class as well. So you got like the first week when things are a little lighter and you're just getting introduced and started and you're going to see how is your professor teaching? Is this a lecture with a PowerPoint? Is this a um, more hands-on thing? Is it really long? Is it really short? And these are all important things to know because you need to be able to assess exactly what this class is in order for you to assess what you need to do to succeed within it. And then um, then you can start developing some strategies as you get in there. So you're going to develop time management strategies. And this is, uh, I guess, step number two after you've planned is to actually use utilize time, time management. And it's going to allow you to spend enough time completing assignments and studying and reading in the textbook. And I put that last thing in separately 
from studying because of experiences that I'm having right now this semester. I've got classes where there's assigned reading every week, and I've always had that, you know, I've always had some recommended reading on the syllabus, but, you know, it's often been stuff that got covered in, in the class, and so it's not always been something that I've kept up with, but this semester it's going to be something i got to do, and it's not always in the textbook, sometimes it's other reading outside of that, but still, it's something I'm going to have to do separately, and so I've had to go through my planner, and I've gone through every week for all my classes and written the chapters of the different textbooks that I need to read to keep up with my classwork and to keep up with what we're going over in school, so that's a separate thing. But you're going to look at, like, I've got a statistics class this semester, and it's got a lot of homework assignments that I have to do, but I'm going to have to make sure that I'm providing myself time within all my busy schedule and the clubs and the work that I'm doing to do those math assignments which are going to be assigned to me daily so that I can complete those on my own. I'm going to have to provide study time for myself for all my classes and the way that I will be doing that will be I'm going to be studying for a class the day before I have it throughout the week and then also utilizing my weekend to kind of get caught up and and I also do a lot of the reading in the textbook on the weekend but so like today is Thursday so I studied for my food protection and, and sanitation or food protection and safety class which I have tomorrow and I studied for my statistics, statistics class which I also have tomorrow and yesterday was Tuesday no yesterday was Wednesday and I studied for my principles of epidemiology and biostatistics class and my um, microbiology class and the reason that I do it like that is because you know, for one thing it fits in with my schedule and also it allows me to have been really thinking hard about the course I'm about to take so that I it's all fresh on my mind when we start our lecture it's all in my head so that I can make lots of connections in the class and that not only lets me already know more but it helps me to pay more attention because I'm making real connections to everything that we're doing in the class because I've already been thinking about it on my own and learning it. And then, you know, also using that time to read the textbook, which I, I, I do some in the week and I'm going to try to do over my weekends more, especially since a lot of the reading stuff I have to do is for Tuesday, Thursday classes, so I'm going to have a little extra time over the weekends to do that and get caught up. And so that's kind of my time management plan now, and this is my first week, so uh, we'll see if that plan works for me, but that's kind of what I'm doing. And that's, and the, the important thing is that I have planned it. And the strategies that I'm using for time management, the planning part isn't really the strategy. I use a planner. I just use a straight up uh, weekly assignment planner that I bought from the bookstore here. Uh, that works really well for me. And if it's something that you've tried before and it didn't work for you, I recommend that you give it another shot. Is actually using a planner is super useful and it falls apart I think when you don't ever check it anymore but just start checking it uh, you can do so much you can block out your time decide this is the time every day that I'm gonna make the habit of using for work like schoolwork and, and studying and stuff and then actually put in what you're gonna do what you're gonna read what you're gonna study whatever it is and, and assign times to those and actually organize yourself in a way that makes sure that you're gonna be having the time you need and putting the time you need in to each of these courses and then how much time that is is going to vary depending on you and where you are in your education and what classes you have obviously sorry if i'm droning on too long but i think all this is important and so then the next thing i'm going to do is think about what note-taking strategy i can use to get the most out of my time in the classroom and this is important because you spend not that much time in the classroom which is another reason that time management is important because you're going to want to set up a constant habit of you taking some of that extra time to finish up your days with work independently because the actual in-class time you spend is low so you want to make sure that you're filling out your days with actually doing things to help you to succeed but also the time you're in class being low means that you want to get the most out of it that you can and that's where note taking comes in and, and it's also I should have put in there listening as well because you I want to make sure that you're paying attention and getting as much out of a lecture as you can. And so note taking is something that I'm not sure people always think about. Uh, a lot of people I know kind of just copy things down. And this is where you uh, call back to where we 
read the syllabus and assessed the course and, and recognize how it's going to be taught. If you know that the course is going to be taught with a, an online PowerPoint, and that's what the teacher is using, and that PowerPoint is available to you in some online form, I honestly don't think that you being in class copying down the PowerPoint is helping you. And before you think, oh, but I learn well by writing things and copying them down, that's fine. And that is a good study strategy, but I don't think that's the best use of your time in the classroom because you can access those PowerPoints anywhere at any time. But the big difference with being in a class and being on your own studying a PowerPoint is that in class you have access to the teacher. And so if you're spending all your time copying down words that you already have access to on your own, you're missing out on the opportunity to be listening to what the teacher's saying and gaining things from that and, and recognizing what the actual uh, maybe content expert in front of you has to say about what you're learning. So I recommend considering different kinds of note-taking strategies and I've tried lots of them. You could look up the Cornell note-taking strategy which is one that's helped get me through some hard classes. Uh, sometimes more recently I've just been printing PowerPoints out which uh, maybe you don't like printing stuff but that's a good way to do things because you can just annotate the PowerPoints printouts that you've got with extra things that come from the professor so that that makes sure that you've got everything. You've got the PowerPoint and you've got the extra things that the professor added to that PowerPoint uh, verbally. Uh, you, some people do that with their computer. That's a little iffy, you know. Uh, if there's definitely research that shows that using your computer while you're in class does not help you with learning, it can like detract or deduct from it. But that's probably more for distraction's sake than for the actual applicability of a computer for studying or for note taking in this way. So if you actually use it correctly, then I guess pulling a PowerPoint on your computer works well. Uh, but consider different note-taking strategies and, and consider is this going to let me write down the useful information that I need to take from this classroom and still allow me to pay attention and be engaged in the actual course because that's where I think the sweet balance of all this is and that's where you get the most effective and efficient use of your time in the classroom. And then you're going to consider how you're going to actually study for that independently outside of the classroom. You want it to be effective, you want it to be efficient, and you know, kind of recalling to your time management, you only have so much time and you start to have a lot to do as things go on. So that efficient part comes in, you want to make sure that if you spend an hour studying, that that hour means that you really were able to get some stuff done. And then obviously the effective part, if it's not effective, then nothing can be efficient. You want to make sure that your studying is allowing you to learn and allowing you to retain information and different ways to do that. The, for me, my go-to way is to combine all the resources I, all the resources that I have, which um, include textbook. It includes my notes from class from the professor. It includes my PowerPoint, and you know maybe any other additional resources that you have. And then I'll condense them all into my own kind of written note sheet. So I'll take the uh, I'll take a concept from the PowerPoint read it on the PowerPoint to kind of refresh myself, look at what the notes I have say about that, to look for any additional information, read about it in the textbook, and throughout that process, summarize it in my own words on my own paper, and what that does for me is it allows me to, for one, gain more retention by writing it and thinking of it in that deeper level, uh, which is a good you know study thing in its own right, and then also, it allows me to um, have a study sheet which condenses all these things which seems so spread out into one uh, document that I've written that's going to let me come back to it for studying which makes studying in the future more efficient for me and then um, I have a bullet down there define suitable workspaces so this is something I don't really have to do anymore I know where I'm going to study at this point but it's something you should consider because when you talk about studying effectively and efficiently you want to make sure that you have a place to do that if you're going to be distracted a lot then it's not good and uh, you will make sure you have, you have plenty of room right you have a table where you can lay out all your stuff make it quiet and then fill it in with background music if you need to through headphones or if you're in your room use a speaker uh, turn off your phone if you can uh, make sure that you, you're gonna eliminate all the distractions that you can and just prepare yourself to spend this amount of time working because that's an important thing is, is defining that suitable workspace. And then number six is constantly, I will be re reflecting and reassessing my plan. And we're gonna talk about that 
right now, really, we're gonna move forward. And this, if if planning is the second worst thing, or the, the second thing that people don't do in college that's necessary, this is the uh, other one, this is the more important one, I guess, or maybe they're equally important, but either way, you wanna reflect constantly. You, you made that plan, right? You made the plan for all your classes. They might not work. One of them, all of them, I don't know. They might not work. So let me talk about my organic class again. I I mentioned how I was using uh, techniques from my chemistry course. Prior to that, my gen chem course, to help me succeed in organic. And that worked really well at the start uh, when we were reviewing for the old chemistry stuff. But when we started moving into new content, it got a little different, and I didn't really recognize that I wasn't doing as well, but when we took our second test, the first test I made at A, the second test I made like a 72, which is way low for me, not what I wanted, and I realized at that point I hadn't really been reflecting enough, I hadn't been reassessing my plan, and what, some of the stuff I was doing wasn't working, and so I hadn't been improving. I'd stagnated at whatever worked in my Gen Chem course, and it did not work in my organic course, at least not as well as I hoped. And so, that's an example of where I had to reflect. I had to look in myself and say, okay, something I'm doing here isn't working. Maybe a lot of things. I need to change my strategies, change my plans. I know more about this course and how it works. I can reassess this. I can fix this and begin to do better. And if you're doing that and continually improving, then you're succeeding. And that's kind of what I did. I made a 72 on that test. Changed up the way that I did things. Uh, changed my note taking. I changed how I uh, studied for it and how I practiced doing my problems. Next test I made, I think like an 80, uh, I wanna say an 86, which was a significant improvement over the 72 that I made, but it wasn't what I wanted overall. I wanted to make an A in the class, but I was happy to see that improvement. But here's the important bullet, early failures won't define you, and that kinda recalls to you continually improving. I was able to improve in that class, made the, so I made an A on stuff I already knew, then I made a C on all the new content. Then I made a B. The next test, which is the last test within the regular class, I made an A. And then I made an A on the final. I ended up making an A in that class. And sure, if I had done worse, you know, on those early tests, if I made Ds, then maybe I wouldn't have pulled it all the way up to an A. Maybe I would have, but I probably wouldn't have. But I would have pulled it up a lot. And that's the point. Early failures aren't going to define you, but you've got to make the plans to... To have something to reassess and reflect upon and then just don't be afraid to change it don't be afraid to change things up and try something different in that organic class I changed how I did everything I bought a binder I started organizing myself differently I you know did total overhaul on myself and how I was looking at that class and I fixed it and I fixed it and I got better and if I had to take another chemistry course I'd be in a better place to take it rather than people who had done kind of poorly in the general chemistry course and then did even worse in organic but still passed it if they take organic too they're gonna be left in the dust because not only do they not have good strategies but they haven't learned as much as i did you know they learned 60 percent of the content where i would display that i'd learned 90 some percent of it and so that's hard and the point i'm getting to here is that if you're continuing to improve then you're succeeding not just within that single course but within your entire time as a student in college uh the earlier you start doing this stuff the better because as you go along you'll stop having to think about it as hard because you're going to have so many experiences to call from you're going to have so many strategies that you have developed you're going to be so much more capable and that's really the important thing because even a few classes won't define you it's to me it's how much you grow and how much you improve and, and round out as a person during this time in school and I think that planning and reflecting is probably something that you can take with you through a lot of aspects of your life not just school but it's a you know it applies here and so I I, I hope that you will consider trying this Consider making yourself a plan and then just constantly improving upon it. And, that, and then in that way, improving upon yourself as a student. And anything else I could talk about, any other strategies I could talk about, at that point aren't as relevant because you're going to figure them out. You're going to figure out what works for you. 
So I'm sorry for droning on so long here. I did not expect it to take so long, but I thought what I was saying was kind of important. So if you happen to watch through this whole thing, then I, you know, I appreciate you taking the time to do so, and I hope that maybe you got something out of it. Um, I guess I'll just say thanks for watching and listening, and good luck in this upcoming semester and in your future years, and I hope that you have a great time, and I hope that you enjoy a lot of success, and let's look at this presentation from the outside again, how fancy. Um, thanks, and, and if I make more of these, then maybe I'll see you next time.